is uh, Benoit Cladon, and uh, he will speak about Keller and projective groups in a linear case. Thanks. So, first I would like to thank uh, the organizer for the, the invitation. It's my first time in Moscow and, uh, and I'm, I'm glad to be here. Okay, so, so first uh, I want to quote that uh, this is a joint work with, uh, with Frédéric Campana. And uh, Philippe Essidieu. And so the, the subject of the, of the talk is, the, um, is to, to study the difference between two, two classes of group. So the, the first one is the, I will denote it by K. So th this is a class of, uh, of Keller groups. So the fundamental group of uh, compact Keller manifold. And uh, inside this class, you have uh, the smaller class given by the. Is, is your microphone on? Sorry? Just for the. For the yeah. so, so I will speak. Uh, <laughs> I will speak louder. <laughs> okay, okay. And so the, the, the smaller class is given by the, the projective group. So the same definition, but uh, here x is a smooth projective of a C. Okay, so obviously this uh, this uh, this p is inside uh, inside k, but uh, the difference is a uh, is uh, an open question. So we don't know if these two class coincide uh, or not. Uh, so I will skip to, um, to another type of question, uh, which is in some sense uh, which is related, related to, this, uh, to this problem. So the, there is a link with the so-called problem of, of Kodaira. So the, in some sense, the problem of Kodaira is the um, is the full homotopic version of this, uh, of this simple uh, group theoretic question. So we want to know if, uh, if uh, a given compact Keller manifold can be approximated by a projective manifold. So the, the question is the following. So given x uh, compact Keller, uh, can, can we approximate? X uh, by algebraic manifold. So the the uh, the right setting is the following: we want to we want to find some some family, some smooth family over the over the disk, for instance, in such a way that uh, the fiber over zero is our given compact Keller manifold, and we would like that uh, X T to be a uh, Algebraic for for t small enough, uh, or at least for for some for some sequence uh, t k uh, tending to to zero. Okay, so the the first answer to this uh, to this question was given by Kodaira, Kodaira himself in the case of surfaces. So. If, uh, if the dimension of x is 2, then the answer is uh, yes. OK, so uh, remark that uh, if, the, if the answer is yes, uh, the, the pi 1 of x is the same as the pi 1 of, the, of any other fiber. So the, we have a positive answer to this question. But unfortunately, uh, this is uh, an accident of the of the dimension two. So it, it does not happen in uh, in higher dimensions. So there there are well known uh, <coughs> counterexamples given by Claire Voisin. Uh, 
I think it's uh, 2004, something like that. Um, from uh, uh, there exists X compact Keller of dimension uh, at least four, uh, such that X has not the homotopy type. of an algebraic manifold. OK, so it's even worse. Uh, such an X as, a, um, as the, the cohomology algebra. Uh, its cohomology algebra is not the cohomology algebra of uh, an algebraic manifold. OK, so it can be detected at the level of uh, cohomology. OK, so. So this, uh, at the level of the full homotopy type, so the, the, the answer is no. But uh, the, there is still an open question at the, at the level of fundamental group, because these are not counterexample at the level of the pi 1, because the x is given as a, as a blow up of a complex tori. In particular, its pi one is the pi one of a complex tori and uh, complex tori, sorry, and uh, and so this is the fundamental group of, uh, of an abelian variety. So the counterexample of Claire are not a counterexample for the for the question about the the, the pi one. Okay, so in the in this work with uh, with Frederick and Philippe, we we investigated the the case where the the group have some some good properties. So the, they are in some sense, linear. And so the, the theorem we, we got, so let's compare now. So we, we proved the, the following uh, theorem. It can be stated in the following uh, pictorial way. So if a, if a compact Keller group is also a linear group, so, so this is a linear, it stands for linear. So uh, we just mean that we just want some, uh, some abstract uh, homomorphism into some, some GLN. So if a Keller group is also linear, and then in fact, it's, it's not a priori, it's not uh, projective, but it's virtually projective. So there exists a subgroup gamma, gamma prime, which is a finite index, such that gamma prime is in P. Are there any examples of nonlinear Keller groups? Yes, there are. There are a, a, Actually, it's quite easy to, to construct uh, some infinite Keller group which are not linear, but uh, for the time being, they always have some some linear representation. So the the, the f I think the first uh, counterexample was given by Toledo uh, in 1993. So there exists a Keller group. which are not linear. But they came equipped with, uh, with some, some linear representation. Actually, they are, they are built from a uh, from linear group. Sorry? No, 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 it's not really finite. The group of Toledo? Yeah, it's not. The, the kernel to the profinite completion is very, very big. It's a, it's a free group of infinite rank. OK, so at least in the, in the linear case, we had some a satisfactory answer to the, to the problem. And uh, yeah, probably I will need the full board. So. And uh, actually, the. This, this theorem can be divided into two, two steps. 
So the first one is, uh, is some really uh, geometric. So uh, it's about the structure of the so-called uh, Shafarevich variety. So, so given x uh, compact Keller, and the uh, row, some uh, infinite. So I assume that it, this row is, uh, is non-trivial. It has uh, an infinite, infinite image, sorry. And uh, <coughs> so uh, with this data, we, we can associate it a, a map, which is called the Shafarevich map. So there exists a sequence of maps. So the, the first is a, is a vibration in a rough sense. Uh, it just means that it's connected. It has connected fiber and subjective. to uh, the so-called uh, Shafarevich variety. So it's usually uh, denoted like that in the literature, but since we're in Moscow, we can make an effort and, <laughs> and write it like that. So uh, we have such a, such a quotient map. Uh, the fiber here are the, the maximal sub variety Z contained in X uh, such that the image of the composite map phi 1 of Z use the inclusion to, to get a morphism between the fundamental group and compose with rho. And we want this image to be, uh, to be finite. So uh, anytime we add uh, a sub variety inside uh, inside X, uh, which have this property, we can we can contract it to a point in the Shafarevich variety of X. And so the and the the interesting point when we have yes this assumption of linearity, we can get some extra structure on the on the Shafarevich variety of X. It's a, a vibration. A smooth vibration uh, over a general type uh, so it's an algebraic variety of general type and the fiber here are complex terms. OK, so in some sense, it's a, this result is a generalization of uh, older result of Collar in the algebraic case. But here, we have to deal with the, with the general compact Keller situation. Is it canonical? Yes, yes. Mm. Everything. Uh, ah, uh, yeah, this is, this is birational, since the pi 1 is a birational invariant. So, uh, we eventually have to modify x to have such a, such a nice picture. And uh, something that I forget, forgot, sorry. Um, this is up to finite et al cover. So it's the, f it's the first place where we have to, to consider a, a finite index subgroup to have such a, such a nice description. OK. Ah, and. Uh, so just to convince you that uh, we can uh, we can forget x and just uh, look at uh, this uh, at this smooth situation, the we have the factorization of rho. So it factors through the pi one of the Shafarevich variety of x. So this is just by my linearity is the fact that uh, essentially uh, you can assume that the group are torsion free. Uh, mm. 
more or less. But uh, can you obtain that by taking all curves such that this map is uh, has finite index and then just gluing them together in using Campana's uh, map? This, this quotient? Yeah. Yeah, this is exactly achieved uh, like that. This is a quotient by a, a family of uh, of cycle uh, having such a, such a property. Okay, so, so the the hard part is to prove this, uh, this this nice structure. So the existence of such a fibration is known for for a long time, but this is uh, th this precise description, uh, which was the the real uh, real statement. Okay, so uh, I won't. I won't talk about this, uh, the proof of this result. It uses uh, a lot of uh, hot theory, um, uh, Griffith's, uh, Griffith's domain, uh, and so on. And that, that's where we use the, the linearity uh, uh, assumption. So we can use the Simpson theory to, to prove such a, a nice, uh, nice result. But uh, today, I, I will talk about the, the second step. Yeah. And what was the property that that had with respect to the representation or with respect to the fundamental? Ah, this one? Just know when the fibers are the core eyes. Yeah, yeah. So the, 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 the fiber are the, um, okay. They are the maximal sub variety uh, of, uh, of Schroeder of X on which the representation has an abelian image. Okay. And uh, actually, si since. So a posteriori, you can see that uh, this is exactly the Itaka vibration of, uh, of Shiro of X, since this is of general type, and you have kappa equal zero in the fine. Um, you can you can uh, you can suppose that it's smooth, since everything is birational. It's a rational map, not not. Yeah, but no, you not um, I think uh, in the um, in the linear in the linear case, we, we have a, a very nice um, representant for for this uh, for this guy. So we can even assume that it's around. But but by the way, the uh, since this invariant is uh, bimeromorphic, we can uh, we can assume that uh, we blow up so in such a way that all the map are holomorphic and uh, everything is smooth. Yeah, one fiber. Okay, so once we, once you have such a, such a picture, you you work on it, you work on it, and uh, at this point we use a result of, uh, in some sense, uh, the exactly the result of collar, which says that uh, once you have once you have such a manifold with a uh, where the rep <coughs> with uh, such a representation uh, which is big in the sense of collar. Then you have a, you have a, a better candidate for the for the Itaka vibration, and this kind of result was generalized by Nakayama in the in the Keller case. I think you can make it smooth. I think it's a rational category, so you can always make it smooth. You can make it smooth. Yeah, you are changing X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X is allowed to, <laughs> to be modified uh, any time you, you need. OK, so the second step is the, um, uh, the, second step is the, is the study of this kind of situation. And uh, actually, this, this is an answer of the, this is quite an answer to the Kodaira problem. But in this uh, particularly smooth uh, situation, so I will change the notation and now, so let uh, x to be the, uh, the smooth vibration um, whose fiber are complex to I. Chep, chep, chep. Then up to, uh, uh, and x is supposed to be a compact Keller. 
then up to a finite etal cover. And actually, this is a cover which comes from the base. Then um, x can be deformed over b, so to a, to a vibration uh, y over b in such a way that it has a section. And the fiber um, are big and varieties. So it's it's a it's a kind of relative version of the the well-known fact that a complex tori can be deformed to abelian variety. But here we have to to handle the, the fact that we have a family of complex tori. Okay. Uh, check check check. Uh, in particular. If, uh, if B is algebraic, then uh, Y is as well. Because we have um, a compact Keller manifold, which is, uh, in some sense, uh, algebraic, algebraically connected. So uh, any point can be connected by a chain of. Uh, so the zero section helps you? Yeah, yeah. So the so I, I will uh, I will try to, to give the, the proof of the of this uh, of this theorem too. Is there anything? No. Okay. Okay. So uh, in particular, uh, if we if we begin with a if we begin with a linear fundamental group, then we can apply this. To have such a such a nice situation, a smooth vibration of complex tori, and then apply this uh, this statement, and at the end, the pi one of y is a, a finite index subgroup of pi one of x, and uh, this y is algebraic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I f I forgot to state it, but x is compact here. OK, so the first <coughs> uh, so the, in the first part, uh, after this uh, very long introduction, uh, I would like to, to study the uh, topology of family of Tori. And in the second time, we, we will use some tool coming from the, the Kodaira problem. That's, that's why I, I state it. OK, so, uh, so we, we start with a, with a smooth vibration. Uh, sorry. Smooth vibration and the uh, fiber are complex to right. And x is a compact Keller. And uh, OK, so we would like to understand uh, how far is x from uh, its, uh, what, are we, what are I call the Jacobian variety. So it's the, so it's the family of tori, of the same, the fiber is the same, but now we have a section. And this, uh, this relative Jacobian is given by the the basic uh, Hodge theory. So you consider the um, okay. So you consider the local system given by the the H one of the fiber. So 
So this is a local system. And uh, this guy can be embedded uh, to what I will call the E. Uh, this is the <coughs> the direct image of the dual of this direct image. So it's the it's the one zero part of the of this uh, this variation of edge structure. Okay. And uh, now we can form the the quotient. The, the total space of this guy modeled by the the, lat the relative lattice, and so this is a this is a smooth family of a B. The fibers are exactly the same, but uh, this time we have the zero section. And uh, uh, if X is compact Keller, then this uh, this relative Jacobian is also compact Keller. So it's, uh, for instance, a consequence of. Uh, the theorem of uh, Varoukas. Okay. So I will use it later, but not the first fact where we're we going to use. So this map, since this is a smooth vibration, it induces a map at the level of uh, homotopy group. So we have the map between the pi 1. So this is subjective since uh, the fiber are connected. And then we have uh, the kernel, which is given by the image of this group. Mm. And uh, since x is scalar, we can prove that actually this map is injective. Okay. And this is a this is a consequence of the degeneration of the um, Lorentz spectral sequences. Okay, and so this uh, this group is abelian, and it's well known that such an exact sequence gives rise to a, a cohomology class. I will denote it by E one. So it's a cohomology class of degree 2 of the group, pi 1 of b, acting on uh, this, uh, this abelian group. OK, so this is a, a first invariant of the, of the vibration. But it, this is only a topological invariant. So we want to use now a holomorphic invariant. And here we use the we will use the relative Jacobian. So the relative Jacobian actually since uh, since it has a zero section, uh, we can consider the shift of its of its local section. So this is a well defined uh, shift of abelian group, and uh, this shift sits inside uh, this. This is exactly the, the definition. And uh, it's easy to see that such a, such, such a vibration gives rise to a, a cohomology class of degree 1 with value in this shift. So consider ui. So uh, it's, it's a covering of an open covering of b uh, in such a way that um, uh, f as a section over uh, ui. So over ui, you have such a section. OK, so here we, we use the fact that uh, in a complex tori, to, to add two to points in a complex tori, you, you need a you need an origin. 
but to subtract two points in the complex array, you don't need an origin. So we can consider, so over ui intersect with uj, the, the quantity si minus sj, uh, call it, uh, for instance, gij. So this is a well-defined section of this, uh, this shift. And this is obviously a, a co-cycle. So, so now we have uh, EH. So this is an holomorphic class. So it, it depends on the holomorphic structure of X. And uh, it sits inside this, uh, this group. Okay. And now we want to, it's easy to compare uh, to compare these two classes. So just consider the long exact, exact sequence associated with this, uh, with this short exact sequence. So we have H1 of B. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really the yeah, yeah. Relative, albanese. Relative albanese, if you prefer. <laughs> no, no, you're you're right. But just a matter of uh, of name, and uh, so we have the. Um, okay, so we have this uh, this cohomology group, and uh, the long exact sequence give a map to this group. And here we have the, the holomorphic class. And inside this group, so it's a, it's a classical fact uh, called the Hopf theorem, for instance, that this, uh, the group, of the cohomology group of this group inject inside this, uh, this guy here. And uh, here we define uh, a class I called E1, a topological invariant. And so these two class are mapped to, uh, to the same. OK, I will. Uh, H2, the pi 1 of B, uh, which is coefficient into the local system. OK. And um, the class that I called E1 coming from the short exact sequence of group is mapped uh, onto a class I call E top, and this is exactly the same as this one. OK, so this, this guy will be uh, of interest. What letter is it? E or C? E1? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Where? The class E1. E1. Because it's associated with the pi one, and e h because it's associated with the holomorphic structure of x. Okay, it's probably uh, not very really helpful, but um, okay. And so the the second fact that we're gonna use is that this class is in fact a torsion class. So uh, this is a particular case of a general result due to uh, Arapura. But uh, in our case, in our smooth case, uh, this is really a consequence of the, another consequence of the degeneration of the Lure spectral sequence. So we really use the, the Keller assumption is used through this de degeneration statement due to the line. OK, so. Once we know that this, this class is torsion, we can assume that uh, it is zero after taking uh, a finite et al cover. Eyal, can, can I erase this board?
Okay, so. Uh, so we can assume that it's zero. Uh, so after base change, finite et al base change. So this is where we need to to take a, a finite et al cover a second time. Uh, and at that point, once we know that uh, this class is zero, we use the, the long exact sequence. So the, the previous term is the h1 of b with coefficient in e. So recall that e is the vector bundle uh, which gives the relative Albanese. <laughs> and uh, so once, if we know that this guy is zero, we know that this uh, holomorphic class comes from uh, a class here. And uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's an, an exercise to, uh, to show that uh, this class alpha so is associated with uh, an extension of this shift E, this vector bundle. So we have a vector bundle extension by the trivial one. Okay. So it's the classical correspondence between extension and the uh, class of degree one. And now we we have this related lattice. And so we can uh, we can consider the embedding uh, into this uh, this F. And now consider x to be uh, so the total space of f and mod that by this relative group. So it's, it's no longer a lattice since we have a, a non-compact non part coming from this, uh, this term. And this, uh, this complex variety has a map to the total space of this guy, so as a map to c. And uh, so this is a, a smooth map. And the fiber of uh, zero, so this is exactly E mod H. So this is exactly the, what I call the Jacobian, oh, sorry, with a, so relative Jacobian. And for instance, and the fiber of a one is exactly X. OK, so. What we what we show is the following: after the, after this uh, finite base change, we can deform x to its uh, relative Jacobian. So we can deform x to uh, its relative Jacobian. In particular, we have that the um, this sequence of group, because that this is a sequence we are interested in. So since we can deform, we can assume that, uh, that x has actually a section. And so this, uh, this uh, exact sequence is split. <coughs> so we prove that we have such a nice, nice situation. OK, so let me give uh, two examples. So what happens in the non-Keller situation? So the, the first one <coughs> is the well-known example of up surfaces. So, uh, so for instance, you consider uh, C2 minus 0, and you mod that by uh, the action of uh, multiplication by two. Yeah. And uh, this, um, uh, this complex surfaces has a map to, to P1. And it's a smooth elliptic vibration. So the fiber are the elliptic. But uh, for this, uh, this complex surface, which is not Keller, the 
this uh, dysmorphism is uh, is even not uh, injective. Okay. So call it uh, e this um, this elliptic curve. So the pi one of e and uh, if this is s. So this uh, this map is a, is a surjective but uh, non-injective. So this is z two and this is. Okay, so this is the first uh, instance of uh, how how magic is the Keller world. And even if we even if we have an exact sequence, uh, it, it it does not have to be split in the non-Keller world. So the this is also a well-known example: the Iwasawa manifold. Iwasawa. Freefold, so this is a variety, uh, complex manifold of dimension three. So it has a vibration onto a torus of dimension two, and the fiber are elliptic curves. And um, in this situation, the, we have a, an exact sequence. But uh, this is not split. So the the pi one of this guy is the Heisenberg group, uh, a nil potent group of order two. So this cannot be uh, this sequence cannot be split uh, even after uh, changing the base. Okay. Um, well, so this is the this was the first step. So. Study the, the topology of uh, of this uh, this family. So we saw that topology is uh, at the end quite simple, and uh, and we can assume that uh, we have no. We can assume that we have a family with a section. Okay. So the extension class is infinite order. Is that yeah. 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 Mm. Actually, the in this case the the H two of uh, the extension is the is z, and the, the, this extension is the one in, uh, in z. Okay, so now we we have to come back to the to the Kodaira problem. And um, as I said, uh, Kodaira proved that the any compact Keller surfaces can be uh, deformed to an algebraic one. Um, but uh, the proof of Kodaira really used the, the classification. And uh, recently, quite recently, uh, Niklas Bourdal uh, gave a, a proof which is a more uh, intrinsic. At least, uh, it does not depend uh, really on the on the classification. And uh, to do that, he, he gave uh, the following criterion. I don't remember the the year, but okay. So the the, the criterion is the following. So we consider x omega. Compact Keller, and assume that uh, we are given a family, a deformation of x over some some small neighborhood of uh, of zero, okay, so in such a way that the fiber over zero is uh, is x, and now we look at the at the following composite map. So we have the Kodaira Spencer map. So we send the tangent vector to zero to an infinitesimal deformation of the complex structure. 
Okay, and then we can. Uh, uh, um, oh, sorry. Uh, we can make the. Um, oh, we can contract with the with the Keller class. Sorry. And so, uh, since this uh, this guy is inside this uh, this cohomology group, so we end in this H two of. No, no, this is, there is, so the, the assumption of the criterion is that the, if the following map is surjective, if the, if the, the composite, so if the composite is surjective, then um, the set of U in U, such that the corresponding fiber is algebraic. So this set is dense in U, uh, up to shrinking uh, U uh, around zero. Okay. So the, if uh, if this map is surjective, then X can be approximated by algebraic uh, manifold. Okay, so this uh, this is a very very interesting criterion. So he used this uh, this criterion in the case of surfaces, and then he had to deal with uh, when this this map is is not subjective, and then he, he ended the proof uh, studying uh, very few cases in the surface case. Okay, so now we have to. We have to end up with a relative situation, but uh, we have exactly the same relative criterion. So the statement is uh, is awful, but the, the proof is exactly the same. So we start with x over b, a smooth map. Here we, we do not have to assume that the fiber are complex to I, so just a, a smooth map, smooth vibration. And uh, we assume that uh, we are given um, a relative deformation of a U. So I denote it like that. So X has a map to, to B. So the crypt X has a, has a cal X or has a map to B in such a way that uh, uh, any deformation of of x still fiber over b okay so set theoretically x the the c infinity uh, underlying manifold is unchanged the vibration is unchanged but we only change the complex structure in the in the fiber in the direction of the fiber okay so this is the uh, relative deformation and uh, the, the the criterion is the following if uh, t u not so this is the uh, so if the composite map and here we go into this awful okay so this is fine so if this map uh, this composite if it's subjective, then um, the set of U, of parameter U in U, such that uh, fiber of, okay, so this is a wedge with a, okay. fiber of uh, X U of a B. Uh, algebraic, sorry. Omega is a uh, omega is a uh, is a Keller form on X. I I have a compact Keller manifold, but now my compact Keller manifold is fiber over uh, over a base.
I, I, will, I will write in a, in a more human uh, term uh, just after that. So the, the set of views such that the fiber of this uh, deformation are algebraic, so this is dense in, in OK, so th this is exactly the same, uh, same statement, but in a relative version. So what is this, uh, what is this, uh, this group? Yeah. A priori, it depends on, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, tuk -tuk 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 -tuk. It's dense in the Euclidean topology, so it can be uh, really uh, awful. But uh, but we have a, a lot of points. Because your definition of approximation was that this uh, general member is algebraic. Right? No, uh, no, no. Approximation that. I uh, I want to, to find a, a sequence of points in the uh, converging to, to zero, such that the fiber over this point are algebraic. So this, uh, this is stronger than sense. Uh, OK, so this, uh, this big group here, this is, so yeah. So here you mean all fibers of XCO. Yeah. This group is actually can be uh, identified with the image of the restriction map. Uh, XB. Okay, so this group is uh, independent on on B. So the the, the arch structure can can move, but this is independent on B, and. Uh, so we have to check that uh, this composite to this uh, mysterious uh, obstruction uh, group uh, is subjective. Okay, and now in the case of Torai, so the proof is exactly the, the same as the, the first. It's not very illuminating. Now we have to treat the, the case where x to b is a family of Torai with a section. And uh, in this case, uh, so in this case, infinitesimal <coughs> deformation, relative deformation of, uh, of x over b. This is given by uh, certain endomorphism. of this uh, real local system. So the H is the exactly the local system of the H1 of the fiber, with, but with real coefficient. OK, and such that uh, commuting with E, the, the given complex structure. OK, so we, we start with this, uh, this family of Torai. So we have this local system, but this local system is end up with a, with a complex structure given by the family. And uh, it's exactly as in the case of, uh, as a, of a single uh, torus. So the, the deformation, the infinitesimal deformation, they are given by the endomorphism, which commute with this, uh, with this i, this given i. Okay? This is the local system uh, given by the H1 of the fiber, but with coefficient in R. Yeah, with the one uh, at the bottom of the H. OK, and what is, uh, what is important in the case of Torai is that such, such a guy can be turned into a 
an infin infinitesimal deformation. So this is the second point. So an element of H2 of this image uh, it can be turned uh, okay so plus a uh, datum of a, of a Keller metric on X so this can be turned as an infinitesimal deformation as a okay and uh, this is exactly uh, as in the case of a single torus when you, when you once you choose a metric you you um, okay so you can fix the symplectic structure and then after that you you change the complex structure so it's exactly the, the same in this relative setting. And uh, so we can, in particular, we can apply the, the density uh, criterion. Um, and then uh, x over b can be uh, approximated by can be deformed to a vibration with algebraic fiber. Actually, the, the density criterion gives a, a rational 1-1 one -one class on X, on the deformation of X, which is a Hodge class on the fiber. So this is uh, exactly what gives uh, this, uh, this criterion, even in the, in the absolute case. And so the, since we have a section, so a vibration with algebraic fiber plus section, and uh, if B is algebraic, then it implies that uh, this deformation uh, XU is uh, is algebraic as well. Somehow it's not really on a board, but somehow something is subjective. That's the, was the criterion. Yeah, the so the, the criterion is the, such a, a map to, to this, uh, to this uh, vector space has to be subjective. So we, we start with, uh, with an element in this, uh, in this vector space, and we can construct uh, actually, we can construct infinitesimal deformation by choosing a, a, Keller, uh, a Keller metric on X. So this is, this is quite easy. And then after that, you have to, to prove uh, one more thing is that this uh, deformation is unobstructed. So you have to, to prove it in this, uh, in this very particular case. So you can prove that this deformation is unobstructed. And then you have a full deformation. And each element in this... Uh, in this space is uh, is attained by this. Uh, These deformations are the edge of the edge twists. What are they? Or, or, no, you are deforming complex structure of the core. Yeah, but it, in some sense, it it's exactly the same demonstration as in the absolute case where B is a point. But we just have to check that uh, we can we can make it uh, in this relative setting. Okay. And so we, this, uh, we can finish the proof with, uh, with this uh, statement. OK, so I just want to mention uh, two things. So first, we really need a section. So we really need to, to deform, uh, uh, sorry, we really need to, to have a section. If you have a, if you have a, a compact Keller manifold which is a, which has a vibration where the fiber are, are algebraic, sorry, and the base is algebraic also, 
it does not imply that x is algebraic, even in the Keller, uh, in the Keller world. For instance, uh, consider a, a complex torus of uh, algebraic dimension one. So it has a it has a vibration onto an elliptic curve. The fiber is an elliptic curve. This is locally analytically trivial, but x is not algebraic. Okay, so we we really need a section to to conclude. And uh, okay, and to, to end with this uh, with this story, at at some point we had to we had to consider a finite base change in order to the, the obstruction class to, to vanish this uh, e top. And so uh, the there is a natural question. Is it necessary to uh, to consider a, a base change? And uh, I have no idea how to do this in an equivalent setting. It does not work very well. And just uh, maybe a uh, a very a baby case, but it's not so it's not so trivial. Uh, in some sense, it's a it's a particular case of. Um, it's not really a particular case of the of the question. So uh, Bowers and uh, Rydbuster. I hope the name are correct. Uh, they prove that. Uh, if uh, if a group is is a Keller group and uh, in the same time is uh, virtually abelian, so if it has a subgroup of finite index uh, which is abelian, then actually phi one of x is projective. Okay, so in some in some sense it uh, it fits into this uh, this question, but we. We would like to do uh, such a uh, such a result, but in a in a relative setting, in order to to avoid this uh, this finite base change. Okay, so I think I'm stop here. Thanks. There is this book of, uh, of uh, Amoros Burger, Burger uh, Kochik Toledo, but uh, it's it's uh, unfortunately it's already uh, an old book <laughs> it's from 1996. So a lot of things uh, have been done since, but uh, this is really a good reference. You can find an uh, interesting example of group uh, which are Keller, and the the easiest case uh, in some sense is to prove that the group is not Keller. So it's it's quite easy to, to find obstruction, but it's really difficult to. So this is what Simpson called the construction problem. So <laughs> how to construct such an example? Sorry. I, I think on the, on the page of Simpson you can. Prove. And the easiest abstraction come from Hodge theory. Uh, the abelianization of the group has to be of uh, even rank. So the, in, for instance, Z is not a, is not a Keller group, but you have uh, even more uh, involved uh, criterion. How about finite groups? They are all Keller and they are even are all projective. So this is an old result of uh, Serre. Quite, <laughs> almost. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. To, uh, JLN for big N, and then take a portion. Yeah, but so no, but you want to. Uh, no, but the, the point is you have just have to treat the case of symmetric group, and then you can act on a, on a product of P, uh, P to something. Then the the, the <laughs> resulting uh, quotient is a uh, is singular, arm and then you have to to explode. And uh, mm -hmm. it's uh, the construction so is. So you get a rational connection, right? 
Да, да, да. 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 Да, Uh, a non-smooth, uh, rationally connected uh, variety does not have necessarily a finite phenomenon. <laughs> no, but uh, for instance, in, the, in this book, uh, the, the construction is explained better than uh, <laughs> I did. Do you know some examples of curl groups with zero refinite completion? <coughs> with zero? No, it's not a question. An, an infinite Keller group with a zero and completely unknown. We do not know if, for instance, a simple group can be or not Keller group. Infinite. Thank you. Thanks. Is that a good thing? Yeah.